I'm just a mechanic. I'm not an ideo ideological. I know you're not. But you and do when point I look to this at what I'm, what I'm describing here is the fact that there is um, a limited amount of time and no um, an enormous cost. The technologies have not been developed. The, the um, not investing in uh, oil development or or fossil fuels and so on creates a supply demand. It, a lot has to be accomplished in order to create a, a change. And I'm, I'm speaking scientifically. Well, you know, the administration's that. approach is don't look at fossil fuals. So uh, you find that all. But I'm saying that's as you do that, that's costly. I'm, I'm just saying the bill. How much money does each one no, of these I understand, cost? but would Ray Dalio be for going all in on all types of energy in the interim? Uh, um, I'm, of the, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you what the costs are. Right. Okay? What your preferences are for, are for a society as a whole to decide on its particular preferences, but there is a, I'm saying we're going to face a lot of cost. We're going to, the cost of a, a clean energy attempt is very costly. The cost of social programs is very costly. The cost of building the defense adequately is very costly. The cost of um, inefficiencies, which come from the fact that there's independence and self-sufficiencies in all of these things, is very costly. Who pays that cost? Okay. Who pays and, that cost? And, well, the way it works is it's simple. You will either, you'll run a deficit, and you will either tax it from people, or you will print it because you got you have the money you have to get the money and taxing it is um, very difficult I'm just speaking mechanics because you're taking it away from somebody and nobody wants to have it taken well, away the administration from wants to take it from the very wealthy I, I, like you. I understand but I I'm just saying I know that but, you're but going what do you to, think of that uh, 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 I, again I'm a mechanic right um, uh, uh, you, but you're you, a very wealthy mechanic oh, and, okay and, and a well, lot I, of people I, have yes, their eyes so what I believe like you. yes I believe that people like us um, if we're not um, investing in the education of our children and we let it, the infrastructure go down and we continue to print money and we're living in a way which is a, a di you know, wasteful, not productive kind of way, we're going to pay a terrible cost for that. So as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing is, are we investing in things that will make us productive and competitive? I don't, you can't give away money. You can only invest. And, and that, those are in those things. Education and but so with all I'm, our debt, do we have money to invest? Well, right? that's, you're going to have to get it one place for another. You're going to yeah. tax me. Yes, tax me. Right. Tax me and so on, but make it productive. Right? What do your fellow Wall Streeters say when you say something like that? Um, well, I, I think most people would say um, that it really depends how it's spent. Yeah. If it's, it, they don't understand a lot of people in private, understand, but is it going to be spent productively? Got it. Because you have to produce productivity. You, if you don't produce productivity, you, you can't eat money. You can produce yeah. money, but you can't eat money. Money isn't wealth. What People is wealth tried. is productivity. People have tried to eat money. Let me step back, if I can. You talk about three big themes, and, and, and we're in a world right now where two sides aren't talking to each other. There are extreme differences. Debt is piling up here, there, everywhere. How do you look at the world right now? What are the big things you look at that bear watching and looking at empires that have come and gone? And what what do you see? Um, I've seen this play out like watching a movie happen over and over again. And uh, there are three classic big things. Um, there's the financial. Are you on a sound financial footing? Spending more than you're earning. Um, with, do you have the internal conflict? Um, is there the differences we're talking about, the wealth differences, that, right. or is it a country of equal opportunity? You know, I, I was lucky I grew up in a country of equal opportunity. Um, and that's historically, where does the talent come from without bias and let everybody have that talent? Do you have that or do you have the conflict? When you have the two combined, it's a combustible combination because when you have a financial challenge, 
and at the same time, like a st bad stagflation, and at the same time you have a lot of conflict with gift differences, you see the dynamic that's at odds. You see the polarity. You see it in the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, Chinese Revolution, Cuban Revolution, and so on, that you see that dynamic. That worries me. And if you are not strong relative to the outside opponents, outside competitors, that is a dangerous situation. And so I see those three things, the financial, the internal conflict, and the external conflict as risky things. And yet we have the power. Let me tell you then the good part of this. Please. We are um, more inventive than we have ever been. We have more to, together than we've ever been. The world is richer. The world is more inventive. Technologies, artificial intelligence, the ability to come up with um, vaccines and so on. If you can work well together to deal with this together and you avoid the conflict, but and then you're responsible, probably like your parents raised you. Are you going to earn more than you, right. than you spend? Are you going to save the basics of those things? Are you going to be well educated? If you do those things, you will have a, the world can have a better than ever life. But we do have these risks, the financial risk, the internal conflict and the external conflict risk. Does it make you worry, though, about the world like I by the end of your book and looking at the sweeping history, you pointed out the one big thing I worried about is we're repeating some bad history here. We're in that phase that makes me think we're at the end of the run, the, the sort of like the British Empire. But nothing's predestined. I know, I have, no, I, but it does this, seem to be a pattern. If I, have, uh, uh, I have a principle. If you worry, you don't have to worry. And if you don't worry, you need to worry. <laughs> because if you worry, if I can help people think, is this logical? Um, should we worry about it, then the worrying about us will let us make sure that those things don't happen. Can we work together as a country in a bipartisan way? Can we overcome that? And we look at the consequences of not doing that. Can we handle our finances in, in a productive way of investing in things like education and infrastructure in a way that makes us stronger? They're investments. Can we not go to war? externally. Can we do those things? Because if we really know what those are like and what the worry is like that, and we'll avoid those things, we will have a better future. But we sometimes get lucky, right? A good leader comes along when you least expect it. Winston Churchill, right? In our country, Abraham Lincoln. You could argue, you know, you were nobody growing up, you know, a caddy. And all, so you became a multi-billionaire, of course, with, you know, big dream and all. But we do seem to find the right people at the time we most need it. I think Can we find that now here? Because there's doubts here looking at the list of presidents. I don't think so. I don't. Uh, someone out there you see. That. Um, I think that I think that there's a possibility of it. Do you but, see anyone who gets but your not, no, let, let me explain what I okay. mean by the possibility. Um, and no, I don't. Okay. But I, I but I don't. You know, I'm no. <laughs> no but um, not, that doesn't mean that. I understand. OK, let. The question is, can our population elect a president of the United States, a president that represents the majority of people? And, and so let's look at that analytically. Um, um, depending on how you define extremism, um, 25 or 30 percent of the population is fairly extreme of the right and 15 percent or so is fairly extreme of the left. They're dominant, they, they're very forceful within their pro parties. We see that um, the, in the parties we're getting uh, a tendency for more extremism. Right. Moderates are leaving and um, that what we each side wants is fighters right. for them and will win at all cost. So that dynamic is producing that. Can we get a strong leader of the middle who will bring the country together? I'll ask you that question. I don't have any unique insight. We could just reverse the question. Right. Okay, but I'm saying Whoever that, it is would have to win by a landslide, though, right? You, you, the middle, the, what the constitutes the middle, let's take those percentages. Right. So that means that, you know, 40% um, of the population would be fairly extreme. 60% of the population is still relatively moderate. Hmm. And so as we think that, but there's no 
platform for the middle. There's no candidate in the middle, uh, in a sense. And so I think that analytically, that's our question. Can you get, uh, first, do we agree that we need a, a, um, somebody to bring our country together and to be strong? Second, that we are together and then do the right things. And those will be difficult things, people that won't like those things. Can we have somebody in the middle do that? Now you're asking me the probability. I think you can assess the probability as well as I can, right. but that's what the mechanics are like, right? So what, would you say it's probable? It's not probable, but it's possible. I hope we do. Ray Dalio, thank you very much. Very good seeing you. Good seeing you. Good luck with this money thing. See how it works out, okay? Thank you again. Thank you.